Okay, now questions for Coach Patino. Back over here on the right. Uh, Rick, Ed Graney, San Diego Union Tribune. It might have been 27-11, perhaps, when you called off the zone and, and, and went to the press. Uh, do you sit here right now knowing you're in the Final Four because you kind of went back to the Rick Patino style, or is, or is it out of they were just making everything they threw up? It's a combination of both. You know, I look at it and I say to myself as we're playing zone, the reason we're trying to play zone right now, we're banged up more than you can imagine uh, in a lot of areas. And I'm saying, okay, they hit a shot from about 15 feet past the top of the key. They banked one in from the side. They fell out of bounds on another one. And then they made some legitimate ones. Okay, do you come out, you know, or do you stick with the game plan? Now, we've had to abandon so many things this year because of injuries. All of a sudden, we're running, we're pressing. Injuries happen. Now we've got to slow it down, play it close to the vest, play zone. I've never had to abandon a whole scouting report at halftime. Uh, I've never been about in 31 years of coaching or whatever I am as a head coach. Never had to abandon it at halftime. And, uh, uh, but I felt it had to be abandoned, not so much because of the shots. I felt it had to be because they were making shots against our man, too. I felt it had to get abandoned because their confidence was down. Now, at this altitude, to press like that, to get after the ball like that uh, is very, very difficult. Uh, Taekwon was cramping. Francisco was just cramping up here just now. Ellis is, uh, falls down, and his patella tendonitis was bothering him. But to have no substitutes and do that is why it's so incredibly remarkable to me watching these guys. And uh, I thought Francisco, I thought it was BJ that reached in on the trap on the sideline. Then to play the overtime, I really thought Taekwon's shot was in with, with the uh, no time on the clock and regulation. really believed it was in. But we felt great going into overtime. And um, um, my pride level for this basketball team is um, as high as it's ever been in, since I've been a coach. I've never seen anything quite like it in my life. Coach, question back over here on the left. Uh, Chuck McGill of the Daily Athenaeum. Uh, Coach Bielan talked about how um, it was the breaks down the stretch uh, that got West Virginia here. And he felt that down the stretch today, Louisville got the breaks. Do you think it's as simple as that? I think we made great defensive plays. I think BJ's block shot, I think L, the only thing we didn't do down the stretch because we were exhausted was make free throws, which we've been doing all year. But I think BJ's defense and his block shot, Ellis's block shot, the loose basketballs down the stretch was amazing. But it takes breaks to win games and to, when you're not an overpowering team, I mean, when we rebound, we, we've not lost the whole year. But we haven't rebound like that. In the beginning of the game, we had six of the best looks from the three-point line that we've had all year off offensive rebounds. Had unbelievable looks when we were fresh and they didn't go down. They had some difficult shots that did go down. And that's the breaks of the game. I've seen it both ways. But we hung in there, hung in there, then changed, came with fanatical pressure. And uh, we made our breaks in that point off defense. And that's the way you usually win the comeback games. It has to happen off your defense. Coach, back in the far right corner. All right, Lee Jenkins from the New York Times. Can you tell us what past comebacks you shared with the guys and how many times you talked about LSU through the course of that second half? Well, believe it or not, I kept saying, look, I'm, you know, and, and of course you're, you're not always believing what you say, but you are citing the truth. You know, I, I, I told them at, at halftime right beforehand, I said, guys, look, we were down 35 with 15 to go on the road. We only down 13, and that team put on a shooting display like I've never seen before. Then I told them about a New York Knicks comeback. I think I was 23 at Portland. And uh, I said, we wanted, I had all the guys' shoes off, Patrick and Mark, and, and I had the last five guys in the game. And we came back and won it at Portland when Portland was really good. So I cited about three or four different situations. And I said, we're definitely going to win it. I see it. I know it. And that was the only mistruth I said uh, in the whole uh, motivational speech. But I, I do believe it. I've seen so many comebacks since I've been a coach. Now, the only thing I didn't want to do is play the way we had to play there to do it because I, I didn't think we had it in us uh, from a health standpoint, but we had no choice but to do it. Coach down here on the left. Rick, uh, I think two nights ago, Larry said this team hadn't overachieved. Now tonight, you're coming back from 20, your best players on the bench. Ty Kwan's playing through an intense amount of pain. Do you still agree with that this team hasn't overachieved? Well, overachieving means, you know, You've got very little talent and you're just way playing. Overachieving is, has been part of this team every day. But they're a terrific basketball team. 
I mean, was that an overachieving night against a as well-coached team as I've ever coached against? Without question, it's one of those nights that makes legend. You know, I've, I've been involved, like I said, in maybe the greatest NCAA game ever, and you got to walk off the court, and um, you have a feeling inside that's undescribable. But then if you're in this game long enough, you see you get on the victorious side. So, yeah, it was um, overachieving sometimes. I, I think overachieving means you go beyond your capacity to try and win. And I think these guys have done that all year. But I think they're a very talented team. They're not a, a Providence team of mine really wasn't, didn't have a whole lot of skilled basketball players. Uh, this team is very skilled. On the right over here, Coach. Rick, uh, Steve Carr from Las Vegas Review Journal. Every great comeback has a very understated element that kind of gets you going. And I was just curious if you thought that uh, Giannini's forcing that turnover late in the first half may have been something to get this team rolling. Here's a kid coming off the bench, and yeah. all you try to do is really get him to draw a foul, and he gets a turnover for you. No question. O that, Otis's shot, uh, Lorenzo Wade's offensive rebound off the free throw, and all those things. What I told him is, is everybody has greatness in them before the game. And I said, I, I remember my sixth man getting us to the Final Four, Darrell Wright. Um, and I said, it's, there's greatness in all of you, and you've got to bring it out tonight, like Perrin did for the minute he played the other night. Somebody's got to bring out greatness. And all those, with Francisco on the bench, to do that with Taekwon cramping, and they kept kidding Taekwon that he was cramping because of all the shots he was taking. And um, he does cramp all the time when he plays that many minutes. But um, you're right, it was a tremendous play by Brad, as well as Lorenzo, as well as Otis. Down here on the left, coach in front. Henry Tafoy, Albuquerque. Coach, you talked about your confidence being down when you were a 27 to 11 deficit. Where's your confidence now, and can a comeback like that be a major catalyst to help you win a national championship? Well, it could, but my, our confidence wasn't down offensively. Our confidence was down because we were playing great zone. And I don't believe, I believe that they just put on such a phenomenal shooting display. You know, it's, it's very rare. I mean, Louisiana Lafayette could do it from four positions. You never see a center shoot like a two guard. You never see shooting like that at five positions. And um, we had to go to man. We had to rely on our concepts. We had to go back to full court pressure. And um, yeah, it's, it's, we believed from the beginning of the year, all we talked about was winning a national championship. But we did it in stages. He said, our goal right now is to win the regular season championship. Our goal is to win the conference tournament and get a high seed. Our goal then is to move on and go to a final four and win a potential championship. Over here on the right, Coach. Avni Patel, Chicago Tribune. Rick, can you talk a little bit about Juan Palacios? He had a relatively quiet 13 points, given the kinds of games that Larry and Taquan had, but he really seemed to play smart tonight. It, with the exception of, I'm yelling, bring it out on one play, and he's looking to take it in, but that's freshman. You, you gotta cut him some slack there. But he was doing an awesome job of offensive rebounding and throwing it back out to our shooters. And you know, when Taquan has that many open looks, he doesn't miss those, but he did in the beginning. And all I kept saying, just keep shooting, son. Just keep shooting, son. He said, don't worry about that, coach. I'll, I'm going to keep shooting. And I thought Tejo just did an awesome job on the backboard in making big plays and catching it inside and powering it up and putting it in. I thought he had a big night. Down here on the right, coach. Rick, you know, you guys made a series of little comebacks. And then uh, they kept hitting the big threes. Even uh, after they started getting rattled, it appeared. They kept finding ways. Final five minutes of the game, I don't think you guys – had a three-pointer, he had a lot of drives to the hole. Was that something by design, or was that just sheer guts oh, and you, you play desire? against a 1-3-1 one, one zone. You can't, you can't go in, and we were doing it a little bit in the first half, you can't attack the sidelines. You must attack the middle. And I said, once we reverse it, you, you have to go down at the seams. You know, when I watched the tapes of the games, Syracuse won the championship in their two defense. Seton Hall beat them in a 2-3 defense. And you watch who beats them. Their man offense is great. But you have to attack it off the dribble, just like we did the other night against Georgia Tech. You can't just rely on threes. The way you beat a 1-3-1 one, one zone is by offensive rebounding and by attacking the middle seams. And we did a terrific job of that all night. And um, when we didn't do a good job of it is when we went from strong side to the corner, allowed them to trap, you get nothing off of that. And that's why I was trying to get the guys to stay away from the strong side corner pass. 
So West Virginia torched the Nets with 18 trades, but it was Louisville and Francisco Garcia cutting down the Nets. Bill Pito, John Bouchacross, next on ESPN News. ESPN News, brought to you by Gamefly.com.